So today's tip is quite a specialist tip, and it's just regarding a particular feature of paragraph styles that I just wanted to flag up. More and more these days, people are using InDesign to create electronic documents, so that could be PDFs, but it could also be things like um, EPUBs or HTML5 documents. You may even have third-party plugins. Um, you'll possibly notice on my menus at the top, I've got the IN5 plugin up here, which lets me include a whole load of interactive widgets in there. Um, there's build wizards in there, and I can go to the file menu and I can export it with IN5, and it outputs a full HTML5 compliant document. So. I can have a whole lot of interactive functionality in there. When you're working with these types of plugins and these types of documents, one thing that can be quite handy is when you've created paragraph styles here. So on this one, I've got a header style, a subheader, and a body style. It's quite useful if you edit these styles, so I'll edit the body copy, to just keep one eye on the export tagging at the bottom. What the export tagging lets you do is it actually lets you export these and ensure that they're using proper standards compliant um, tags and classes in there when you're doing this. Now, you don't have to be a, a web coding expert to do this. If you understand a bit, it's not going to do you any harm, but there's certainly no need to suddenly turn yourself into a web developer. But on here, for example, my body copy, the tag that I would probably want to use for that is the P tag or paragraph tag, which is a standard HTML tag in there. Now, whether I want to give it a class name as well um, is up to me. If I want to, I can give it a CSS class name, which means I can then style it remotely using CSS. That could be handy. So CSS is, I suppose you could describe it as the, the web equivalent of paragraph and character styles. It lets you contain all your formatting in particular styles, if you like. So you could give it its own class name there as well. So that's an option. Now, in this case, I'm happy leaving that with the paragraph tag. And something like the header, I'm going to want to edit that. And again, in export tagging on that one, I'm going to want to give it the main header tag, which is called an H1. So H1 is your main primary page header. So I'll give it that one, click OK. And then on my subheader, that one, I'm going to edit that. And that one will be a second level header. So that one in my export tagging, I'm going to go down here and that's going to be tagged up using an H2 tag. And you can see this goes on down to H6. Now, these are your standard HTML tags, um, and they're going to be included, but you can also create your own CSS in there as well if you want. So I just wanted to flag that one up because it's something that a lot of people will find useful. And when you then do come to output these documents, whether you're outputting them and you're going down to file and export and outputting it, for example, as an EPUB, or whether you're using a plugin like HTML5 with IN5, and you can go in there and you'll see, forcing me to save it now. So we'll just save it to the desktop. And you'll see there, it's now got a whole lot of options in there. Control of things like backgrounds. You can put in your own SEO and metadata there. You can hook it up to Google Analytics, for example, if that's what you're into. And there's a whole lot of capabilities in there to include these when it's exported. So as part of that export process, it would then include all of that. So hopefully that's quite handy at a slightly more advanced level for those of you who are creating digital documents.